All right, let's start for, uh, first defining the types of order. In fact, this title is studied in the 11th class and when you are studying the dynamics. Uh, you classify the forces into two groups. One of them is the contact forces, second one is the non-contact forces. The contact forces are um, the forces between two objects which are con uh, touching each other. If the interaction is with uh, contact, then we say contact forces. If you push, pull a spring or if you pull a, uh, something, if you kick a ball. So these types of forces are called contact forces. But uh, if uh, the objects interact with each other uh, without um, touching each other, without contact, these forces are called non-contact forces and uh, generally non-contact forces are uh, named as field forces. The first common type of the field force is the gravitational force. So to use generally this gravitational force um, uh, dominant uh, between the space objects, for example, Earth uh, attracts the Moon, Sun attracts the, attracts the Earth and the other planets, so it is the gravitational force. So how can we explain this interaction? Uh, we say that the uh, Earth produces a magnetic, like Earth produces a gravitational field around itself, uh, because the Moon is inside this gravitational field, it will be attracted by the Earth. Second kind of the field force is the electric field. So electric field is the uh, electric, electric force is between the charged particles. So positive or negative particles, or negative and negative particles interact with each other with this force. Then we also explain it by this form, the, uh, a charge produces an electric field uh, around itself. If another charge enters inside this electric field, it will be attracted by the field. Third type of the uh, mag uh, field force is the magnetic force. Again, we explain it by this form, so the magnet produces or any ma uh, electromagnet, it could be also electromagnet, produce a magnetic field around. If an iron or cobalt or any other magnetic material enters inside this magnetic field, it will be attracted by the magnet. So then, field concept is used to explain how two non-contact objects interact each other. So then, in magnetic field, we explain it like this. The magnet forms a magnetic field through the surrounding space. When a magnetic material, such as the iron or cobalt, enters inside this magnetic field, it will be affected or attracted by the magnet. So, uh, then no question, uh, yes, a magnet is a magnet, it pulls an object. What what makes a magnet to attract other objects or magnetic materials? So, to answer this question, we should uh, think uh, we will start from the atomic level. Inside an atom, there are electrons uh, and protons, remember. Protons are at the nucleus of the atom. But the electrons are revolving around the nucleus, uh, also rotating about their own axis. Uh, the motion of electrons uh, inside an atom produces the magnetic field. So then these, revol uh, these revolving electrons are also rotating the about their own axis, produce a magnetic field, a kind of magnetic field. In fact, in advanced physics, it's called the magnetic moment, but in high school level, we are going to say it's a magnetic field. So then atom becomes magnetized. Uh, if these atoms form a group, comes together and form a group, it's called the domain. Now, as you see, there are uh, groups of atoms, groups of lines. These lines uh, show the atoms or represent the atoms which have the magnetic uh, fields. So then, uh, the individual magnetic moments or magnetic fields of an, the atoms are aligned with one another and they point in the same direction and form a domain. Uh, if the atoms have the same directed in the same direction and the magnetic field in the same direction or magnetic moments in the same direction they form a uh, domain so as you see there are groups of atoms there are so many different lines so these are the uh, domains so the, if the domains are in the same direction then they they, they support each other and they form uh, a stronger magnetic field and this uh, substance behaves like a magnet but if the domains are in random directions, like in the middle, they, uh, they cancel the effect of one another and the uh, results uh, produce a, mag a zero magnetic field you know, because they cancel the effect of one another. Domains are in random directions. So it is a magnetic material. Don't confuse that. Magnetic material does not mean it's a magnet. Magnetic material is a magnet which can be attracted by a magnet, like an iron or cobalt or nickel. 
But the third group is non-magnetic materials. As you see in the third group, there are new domains. Uh, atoms uh, behave individually, but again, their magnetic moments or fields are in random directions. So they uh, cancel the effect of one another. And for that reason, there will be no net magnetic field in a non-magnetic material, such as the plastic, wood, or um, paper, and so like this. However, if you hold a magnet to a magnetic material such as iron, you are going to observe that this uh, iron becomes a magnet. Why is it like this? When you hold a magnet or when you expose a mag uh, iron to a magnet, magnet, the domains of the magnet are all aligned in the same direction. For that reason, the uh, iron becomes a magnet. However, if you remove the uh, magnet from the iron, you are going to observe that the iron keeps its magnetism for some time. So this event or this phenomenon is known as the magnetic hysteresis. So question, when a bar magnet is broken into two pieces, how many poles would each piece have? So when you break a magnet into two, each piece will behave like a magnet, an individual magnet with a poles of N and S. For that reason, you can never destroy a magnet by breaking. You can produce uh, the magnet, uh, other magnets, uh, more than one magnet by by breaking the magnet into two poles. However, because the number of domains are decreasing for each piece, the strength of the magnetic field, of course, must decrease when you break them into the pieces. So, when some iron filings are split around the magnet, iron filings means some uh, kind of dust of iron, you are going to observe that the, these filings are aligned in uh, specific directions. This explains that uh, around the, the magnet, there is something, magnetic field, or you know, there's a magnetic field. And these magnetic fields are aligned in the, uh, not random directions, regularly aligned and form a pattern. This pattern, these lines, are known as the magnetic field lines. So, a magnetic field is a vector quantity. For that reason, we should give a direction to the magnetic field, and it's, uh, it's represented by B and his unit, the Tesla. So then, as you see in the line, you cannot see a direction, but uh, to make the mathematical calculations, uh, to use the mathematics, we should give a direction to the magnetic field. For that reason, direction of the magnetic field lines are assumed to be from the north pole of the magnet to the south pole. So the one, which is in red, polished in red, is generally assumed to be the uh, north pole, and the one, which is in blue, generally assumed to be s pole or south pole. As you see, the lines are from one pole to another. In fact, uh, they form at the same time. We don't let's say that slowly they are uh, producing each other. Uh, but uh, we can make a model uh, for a magnetic field around a magnet like this, which is on the figure. As you see, the lines are from N to S. But uh, can we say that the line starts from N and finishes at S? No, we cannot say. The magnetic field lines forms closed loops. Uh, some a, a fraction of it is outside the magnetic field, magnetic magnet, and the rest of the fraction is inside the magnetic magnet magnet. So the magnetic field lines continue to pair within a magnet to form closed loops, as you see in the picture. So they have no end, no beginning. So now a question, uh, which point, uh, at which point is the magnetic field is stronger? So the magnetic field is stronger at the point where the magnetic field lines are closer or denser. As you see, magnetic field lines are closest and densest at the poles. When you move away the, from the poles, as you see, the magnetic field uh, intensity is decreasing. Then I can say that the magnetic field of a magnet is the strongest at the poles because the lines are closest there. When the lines are closest, or closer, then we can say that magnetic field is greatest or greater. So, now we are going to define another quantity, but before that we start in the, not to confuse these two quantities, one of them is the magnetic field strength or intensity. Uh, it depends on the uh, magnet. So if the mag magnet is a strong magnet, it forms a magnetic field around stronger. And the close of the magnetic field lines are closest to each other. But second quantity now we are going to learn is um, uh, another quantity which is known as the magnetic flux. So now, number of magnetic field lines crossing an area, number of magnetic fields crossing an area, a given area, is called magnetic flux. So number of, uh, it's symbolized by phi and unit is weather. 
Now there is an area as you see specific specified area and the magnetic field lines are crossing this area. Now let's count the number of magnetic field lines crossing this area. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So now 11 lines are crossing this area. Then I can say that the magnetic flux is 11. But if you make if I make the area larger, in this case, there uh, the greater number of magnetic flux will cross the area. So then a uh, magnetic flux will increase. So then if you make the area, now like in the picture uh, on the left uh, at the bottom, so as you see the magnetic field lines are magnetic field intensities for both uh, picture is the same. How can I understand it? Because the lines are at equal distance from each other. So then each uh, group has the same magnetic field intensity. But uh, the one, the area on the left is larger uh, for that as in four lines are crossing the area, but the area on the right is uh, smaller than two lines are crossing the area. So then I can say that the magnetic flux is uh, proportional to the area. If you increase the area, the magnetic flux increases. But uh, now this picture uh, defines um, the same area, equal area, uh, this identical areas, but the magnetic field intensity is different this time. As you see on the left, uh, the lines are more intense than uh, one on the right. So then if ma look at the count the number of lines crossing the area, you are going to easily observe that the magnetic field lines crossing the area on the left is greater than on the right. Then I can say that if you make the magnetic field intensity stronger, then the magnetic flux also uh, increases. So then two parameters here we can say that determines the magnetic field. Flux. One of them is the magnetic field intensity, second one is the area through which this magnetic field lines crosses. Now, we are going to now define the different uh, cases for the magnetic flux. In part A, as you see in picture A, the area is held um, perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. So then in this case, if you hold the area perpendicular to the magnetic field lines, the maximum number of field lines crosses the area. So then I can say that when the surface area is perpendicular magnetic field lines, the maximum number of field lines crosses the area of the surface, thus the magnetic flux becomes maximum and we can calculate the magnetic flux by multiplying area and magnetic field intensity. However, if the area is held parallel to the magnetic field lines, as you see in part C, no lines are crossing the area, then we can say the magnetic flux is zero. So then when the surface is parallel to magnetic field lines, the number of field lines crosses the area, the surface becomes zero. Thus the magnetic flux is zero. What if the area is not perpendicular, not parallel, if area makes an angle with the uh, magnetic field lines? In this case, magnetic flux will be smaller than A and greater than C. So when the surface is tilted to the magnetic field lines, magnetic flux is calculated. Now we need an equation for calculating the magnetic flux. That equation is this. A times B times cosine theta. So area A is area, B is magnetic field intensity, but the theta is the angle between the magnetic field lines and the normal of the surface. So what is normal of the surface? Normal of the surface is any line perpendicular to the surface. It's called normal. Uh, but uh, we should learn one more thing here. Area is a vector quantity. How can we account for this? Because the area uh, can mm -hmm. show up down, right, left, back, forth. For that reason, area is a vector quantity. So what is the direction of the uh, area? It is the normal of the surface. So area is a vector quantity whose magnitude is the area itself. Yeah, one meter square, two meter square, and so on. Whose direction is the normal of the surface. When we multiply two uh, vectors, A and B, in scalar product, in calculus you are going to learn in the, at university, we get result as scalar. So as you see then, uh, the magnetic flux is, as a result of this multiplication of the scalar product, is scalar. Magnetic flux is a scalar quantity. Since magnetic field is a vector quantity, it must be represented with vectors. If the magnetic field is up to the plane of the pitch, we are going to draw the uh, magnetic field vector upward. If it is down to the plane of the pitch, we are going to draw the magnetic field vector down. If the magnetic field is right, you are going to draw it right. If it is magnetic field is to left, we are going to draw the magnetic field vector to left. But it is in this case the magnetic field lines are in the plane of the pitch and parallel to the plane. But if the magnetic field lines are perpendicular to the plane, how can we draw it? If the magnetic field lines are into the plane of the page, you are going to uh, model it like an arrow. 
uh, moving away from you. If an arrow is moving away from you, you see the back of the arrow, and back of the arrow generally appears as a cross. For that reason, we are going to show the uh, magnetic field vector or, uh, or any physical quantity which is into the page as crosses. But if the magnetic field is out of the plane of the page, uh, again, you can uh, model it like an arrow approaching to you. In, when arrow is coming to you, you are going to see the tip of the arrow. For that reason, it appears to be a dot. Then we can say that if a magnetic field or any physical quantity is out of the page, plane of the page, we are going to show it as a dot. Now let's finish the uh, section with the section of the question. Question 2. Which of the compass needle orientation in the figure might correctly describe the magnetic field at that point? Compass needle is a magnet. When you suspend a magnet in uh, freely, if, uh, such that it can rotate freely, this compass needle or any magnet will align itself in the direction of the magnetic field lines. So then, uh, what is the direction of the magnetic field lines around the magnet? It was like this. So the compass needle, which is in the same direction, in the direction of this uh, magnetic field lines, will be correct. As you see, B and A are in the direction of the magnetic field lines. The rest are perpendicular or in the opposite direction. So the correct answer is A and A.